That man to me seems equal to the gods. The man who sits opposite you and close by listens to your sweet voice and your enchanting laughter that indeed has stirred me up the heart in my breast. For whenever I look at you, even briefly, I can no longer say a single thing. But my tongue is frozen in silence. Instantly, a delicate flame runs beneath my skin. With my eyes, I see nothing. My ears make a wiring noise. A cold sweat covers me. Trembling seizes my body. And I am greener than grass. Lacking but little of death do I seem. Now Gilgamesh got up to tell his dream to his mother, Ninsan, one of the wise gods. Mother, last night I had a dream. I was full of joy. The young heroes were around me and I walked through the night under the stars of the firmament, and one, a meteor, a meteor of the stuff of Anu, and fell down from heaven. I tried to lift it, but it proved too heavy. All the people of Uruk came around to see it. The common people jol jolted, and the nobles thronged to kiss its feet. And to me, its attraction was like the love of a woman. They helped me. I, embrace, I braced my forehead and I raised it with thongs and brought it to you. And you yourself pronounced it, my brother. Then Ninsan, who was well beloved and wise, said to Gilgamesh, the star of heaven in which descended like a meteor from the sky, which you tried to lift but found too heavy. When you tried to remove it, it would not budge, so you brought it to my feet. I made it for you, a goad and spur. You were drawn as though to a woman. This is a strong comrade but one who brings help to his friends in need. He is the strongest of wild creatures, the stuff of Anu, born in the grasslands, and the wild hills reared him. When you see him, you will be glad. You will love him as a woman, and he will never forsake you. Poetic Fragments by Sappho, translated by Anne Carson. I simply want to be dead, weeping she left me, with many tears and said this, oh how badly things have turned out for us. Sappho, I swear against my will, I leave you. And I answer her, rejoice, go and remember me, for you know how we have cherished you. But if not, I want to remind you of all the beautiful times we had. For many crowns of violets and roses at my side to put on, and many woven garlands made of flowers around your soft throat, and with sweet oil costly you anointed. meadow has come into bloom with spring flowers and breezes like honey are blowing. In this place you cryptus, ticking up in gold cups delectably, nectar mingled with festivities. Poor. The moon has set and the Pelides is in the middle of the night. The hours go by and alone in bed I lie. This is Lady of the Largest Heart by Anna Duana. In sacred right, she takes the brooch, which pins a woman's robe, breaks the needle silver thin, consecrates the maiden's heart as male, gives to her a mace. Lady of largest heart, keen for battle queen, a whirlwind warrior. Her song sung with joy of heart, she sings and soaks her mace in blood and gore, smashes, head, smashes heads, butchers prey with eater axe and bloodied spear all day. These evil blades the warrior flings, pours blood on offerings, so who she feeds, dines on death, the song she sings. Dead. Those warrior women, like a single thread, come forth from beyond the river as common work, in devotion to you, whose hands sear them with purifying fire, where many devoted pass before your eyes. Dead you will lie in never memory of you, will there be nor desire in the aftertime, for you do not share in the roses of period. But invisible too, in Hades' house, you will go your way among dim shapes, having been breathed out. 